Intel 4004. The Intel 4004, released in 1971, was the first commercial microprocessor in history. It was a 4-bit processor originally designed for calculators, but it proved that a full central processing unit could fit onto a single integrated circuit, containing just 2,300 transistors and running at 740 kilohertz. It handled simple instructions one step at a time. While limited in performance, its importance was revolutionary. The 4004 showed that program programmable logic could replace fixed-purpose electronics, opening the door to general-purpose computing. Intel 8086 The Intel 8086 arrived in 1978 and introduced the x86 instruction set, which would go on to dominate personal computing for decades. It was a 16-bit processor with initial clock speeds of 5 to 10 MHz. Its breakthrough moment came in 1981 when IBM selected the 8088, a variant of the 8086, for the original IBM PC. That decision effectively locked the entire PC industry onto Intel's x86 architecture. From that point forward, nearly all consumer and enterprise machines would build on this foundation, making the 8086 one of the most influential chips in computing history. Intel 80386 The Intel 80386, released in 1985, was the first 32-bit processor in the x86 family. It could address up to 4 gigabytes of memory, a huge leap from its predecessors. One of its biggest innovations was protected mode, which allowed operating systems to isolate memory between applications, preventing crashes and improving stability. This feature enabled true multitasking, letting multiple programs run at the same time without interfering with each other. The 80386 was also backwards compatible, meaning it could still run software built for earlier processors. With these capabilities, it became the foundation for advanced operating systems like Windows 3.0 and Unix variants, pushing the PC firmly into the modern computing era. Intel Celeron Intel's entry-level processors begin with the Celeron series. Celeron chips are designed for the most basic computing needs. They usually feature a small number of cores and relatively low clock speeds, which means they cannot handle demanding tasks. Typical use cases include web browsing, email, online shopping, streaming standard definition or high-definition video, and light document editing. You will often find them in budget laptops, low-cost desktops, and school devices, such as Chromebooks. Because of their limited performance, they struggle with multitasking, gaming, or any software requiring significant processing power. Their main advantage is low cost, but for most consumers, they provide poor value compared to slightly more powerful options. Intel Pentium. One step above Celeron is the Pentium series. Pentium processors were once Intel's flagship line in the 1990s and early 2000s, but today they occupy a low-budget tier. They generally offer higher clock speeds and more cores than Celeron, which allows them to handle smoother video playback, light multitasking, and standard office applications such as Word, Excel, and Zoom Call. They can manage simple games and media tasks more reliably than Celeron. Pentium chips are commonly found in laptops and desktops in the lower mid-range price segment. They remain unsuitable for heavy gaming, video editing, or professional applications, but they provide an acceptable experience for students, office workers, and general users on a tight budget. Intel Pentium Pro and Pentium 2 and Pentium 3. The Pentium Pro, released in 1995, was a processor aimed at servers and workstations. It introduced out-of-order execution, a feature where the CPU could rearrange the order of instructions internally to maximize efficiency and keep its pipelines busy. Although not very successful in consumer PCs due to its cost, it set the stage for Intel's future architectures. In 1997, the Pentium 2 brought these advanced features to mainstream desktops. Packaged in a unique cartridge form factor, it added MMX instructions designed to speed up multimedia processing such as video playback and audio compression. Two years later, in 1999, Intel followed with the Pentium 3. It expanded on MMX by adding SSE, streaming SIMD extensions, improving performance in 3D graphics, games, and scientific applications. Together, these chips powered the late 1990s internet boom, multimedia applications, and the early rise of 3D gaming. Intel Pentium 4. Launched in 2000, the Pentium 4 introduced the NetBurst microarchitecture. It was engineered for extremely high clock speeds, with some models surpassing 3 GHz, a record at the time. However, this pursuit of raw frequency came at a cost. The Pentium 4 consumed large amounts of power, generated excessive heat, and often performed worse than competing AMD Athlon processors running at lower speed. Although marketed heavily as the GHz race, the architecture scaled poorly, forcing Intel to abandon 
netburst in the mid-2000s. The Pentium 4 is remembered as both a commercial success and a technical dead end, highlighting the limitations of relying on clock speed alone for performance gains. Intel Core i3. The first level in the Core lineup is the Core i3. Core i3 processors are considered entry-level within the Core family. Compared to Pentium, they typically feature higher base clock speeds, more cores, and better support for multitasking. Depending on the generation, i3 chips may include between two and eight cores. This makes them capable of running multiple browser tabs, productivity software, video streaming, and even some light gaming. Games such as Minecraft, League of Legends, or other lightweight titles generally run smoothly on i3. However, for demanding modern games or professional creative work, performance will be limited. Core i3 processors are ideal for students, casual users, or office workers who need reliable speed for everyday computing without paying for unnecessary power. Intel Core i5. Next is the Core i5, Intel's most popular mid-range processor. The i5 strikes the best balance between performance and price for most consumers. Depending on the generation, i5 processors can include 4 to 14 cores, higher turbo clock speeds, and often support technologies like hyper-threading. They are well-suited for gaming, photo editing, video editing, and other creative workloads at a mainstream level. i5 chips can stream 4K content, run multiple applications side by side and handle modern games at medium to high settings when paired with a capable GPU. For most home and office users, an i5 provides more than enough performance to last several years, making it the sweet spot in Intel's lineup. Intel Core i7. Above the i5 sits the Core i7. The i7 line is built for users who demand high performance in both professional and personal computing. Compared to i5, i7 processors typically include more cores, up to 20 in recent generations, along with higher base and turbo clock speeds. They also feature strong support for hyper-threading and larger cache sizes, which allow them to handle heavy multitasking and complex workloads. An i7 can run modern AAA games at high or ultra settings when paired with a good graphics card, while also managing tasks like 3D modeling, advanced coding, machine learning experiments, or editing multi-layer 4K video projects. Because of their performance, they consume more power and often reduce laptop battery life compared to i3 or i5 models. Pricing for i7 systems usually falls in the premium category, making them most suitable for professionals, creators, and gamers who need significantly more computing headroom. Intel Core i9. At the very top of Intel's consumer lineup is the Core i9. The i9 series is designed for maximum performance across extreme workloads. Modern i9 processors can include up to 24 cores, combining performance cores for demanding tasks and efficiency cores for lighter background processes. They are intended for enthusiasts, content creators, and professionals who work with the most resource-intensive applications. Typical use cases include 8K video editing, complex 3D rendering, large-scale software compilation, scientific simulations, and running virtual machines or large data sets. i9 chips are also capable of delivering very high frame rates in modern games when paired with a strong GPU. However, their high price and power consumption mean they are not necessary for most users. For general tasks, such as browsing or office work, an i9 provides no noticeable advantage over an i5 or i7. These processors are best suited to a small percentage of advanced users who require absolute top-end performance. Intel Xeon Intel Xeon processors have existed alongside consumer chips since the mid-1990s, designed specifically for servers, workstations, and enterprise computing. Unlike mainstream processors, Xeons prioritize reliability, scalability, and support for advanced features such as error correcting code ECC memory, which prevents data corruption. Xeons typically have higher core counts, larger cache sizes, and support for multiple CPUs on a single motherboard, making them ideal for data centers, cloud infrastructure, and scientific workloads. While less common in personal PCs, they dominate industries that require continuous uptime and heavy parallel processing, from financial modeling to 3D rendering farms. Intel Atom Introduced in 2008, Intel Atom processors targeted a completely different market. Low-power, ultra-mobile devices. Built with energy efficiency as the priority, Atom chips powered netbooks, tablets, and embedded systems. Their small size and low heat output made them suitable for devices that needed long battery life. While inexpensive and efficient, they offered very limited performance compared to mainstream core processors. Over time, Atom processors found niches in Internet of Things, IoT devices, network equipment, and lightweight computing tasks, but they gradually disappeared from mainstream laptops as consumer expectations for performance increased.
increased. Intel X, Intel's XE architecture, represents its modern effort to compete directly in graphics and AI acceleration. Announced in 2020, XE spans integrated graphics inside core processors, as well as standalone GPUs for desktops and laptops. The idea is to unify Intel's CPU and GPU design under one scalable architecture, capable of serving everything from entry-level laptops to data center AI accelerators. Integrated XE graphics in 11th and 12th Gen Core processors offer much better performance than older Intel HD graphics, supporting modern gaming and creative applications without requiring a separate graphics card. On the high end, Intel's Arc GPUs are based on XE technology, aiming to challenge NVIDIA and AMD in both gaming and professional workloads. This step signals Intel's recognition that future computing depends not only on CPUs, but also on powerful graphics and parallel processing. I made an awesome video about every CPU architecture, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?